Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Peace Light, and today we're doing a commission, um, sh excuse me, a commission showcase. Um, this is the first time I'm doing this. Um, this is very much experimental right now. Um, so I, dec I decided to do it with the, com the share community in VR chat, which I feel like they're not as noticed in the community. So I had some friends help me out with this um, to give a tour around Shader Fest, which is a huge event in VR chat. So, would you like to um, introduce yourself? Me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I sort of, uh, I normally like <laughs> involved in Mokuri project, but I also do shaders. Uh, I didn't, uh, like, I, I distribute some shaders myself. And I also kind of cooperate with drama get on that too. <laughs> <I put it. laughs> mm. uh, uh, what about you, Miss Stabby? Uh, yeah, I'm Miss Stabby. I do uh, like make shaders and a lot of different avatars on top of that as well. Uh, um, and uh, uh, also do game development, but that's uh, yeah outside of your chat. Okay. And um, yeah. Hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, CN Lore, and uh, I've been doing uh, shaders uh, long before VRChat, but VRChat was kind of where it was the first time I was able to show other people shaders and like work with them on shaders and really learn a lot. And uh, I did the ball pit, uh, CN's ball pit and lo-fi, and I have some submissions here, and I'm pretty active documenting a lot of uh, shader tricks within uh, VRChat. And also, um, someone just joined us. Um, um, would you like to introduce yourself, Dimki? Um, like, um, bet um, between um, Shadow River. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 Oh, yeah, I I do programming, shaders, world building, all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, and also the after you're having, um, you're using right now is actually a shader, right? Yes. The entire thing is done in the shader. Hmm. So, oh, so would you like to introduce yourself, Lun? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Len. Um, I work with Virtual Market and uh, do a lot of things here in VRChat. Um, mainly, I reap the benefits of the incredible work that everyone in here and down here does. Um, and we're able to implement those types mm -hmm. of things into our worlds in VRChat. Um, if it wasn't for the shader community, we would all just be in the PS1 era and uh, have vector colors, and that wouldn't be very fun. But, you know, it's these kinds of things that make everything in here very, very beautiful and... and uh, I think I think we'll be able to show some of that to you, but they there's a lot of collaboration here, and it's uh, it really shows. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, what about you, Silent? They are talking, Taki. Oh, oh. Um, see if I can zoom in the camera. Yep. Let's see. Oh, there's the camera. No rush. Oh, perfect. Uh, give me a sec. Just zoom in. Oops. Okay. I'm wearing one of them. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of the stuff is here. Yeah. Also, of course, a lot of these people do sell their stuff on both Virtual Market and Booth and other places like Umroad and places like that. And if, uh, if you need a really good shader for a very specific purpose, you can find mm. them here after the stream. Yeah. Um, also, Len, if you don't mind, um, can you read um, Silent's um, text? Just, oh, oh, yeah, sure. No, no never mind. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. No <laughs> worries. Silent's no worries. It's really interesting shaders in here. Um, yeah, and they've got a bunch of things inside ShaderFest as well. Um, they've been making shaders as, practically, as long as I've been in VRChat, and as long as they've been in VRChat. Yeah. And they share a lot of them with the community. It's, it's, it's well-loved. There's a lot of really cool stuff in here that gets used just about everywhere, and you're about to see all of it, so... Oh yeah, for sure. And one of the examples was the shader that you just saw with the keyboard, uh, with the text uh, showing up. That mm. was right. One thing that mm. Silent worked on. Yeah. So, 
So, Amlan, would you like to show us around the world? Yeah, sure. Um, these guys can probably show you almost, oh. more, almost more than I can. Definite, oh. Most definitely. But the first thing that you should always check out is the credits. Either oh, yeah. you do them last or you do them first, but either way, there's a lot of really important people here. Um, in the Western community, a lot of people don't know um, a lot of the Japanese community that organizes these types of events. Um, these kinds of conventions are essentially modeled after things like Kamiket and other Japanese um, you know, community or uh, collaborative hobby conventions that it's almost like a cottage industry where they get together and do these things, you know, once or twice a year. This particular event happens once every two years ish, I would say. And a lot of the people that are involved in this community are, um, are pretty big in other like communities with that as well, in terms of building things that you've used. A lot of the avatars you see in VR chat, almost all of the shaders that everyone here uses in VR chat comes from somebody in here. Um, there's a lot of overlap um, in this community and the and the other communities. Yeah, and they're all absolute legends. I absolutely agree. Hi, um, for sure. But yeah. So, so just to give you an idea of, of what some of the other people in here do. So, Momama, I believe, organized the whole thing in this particular um, setup. But Lura did a lot of the lighting. Um, Kenomo, I think, did the audio for this. Um, I'm not too familiar with what. Uh, so, I think Kuratori did the udon setup for a lot of it. Um, and, uh, and, and they, I mean, again, they all collaborate to build these things out. Um, the world itself is... So that means that website where I know I ask him. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so Shadow River actually knows a lot of the Japanese community, yeah. too. And oh, really? They'll, they'll be able to help me out here in yeah. all of this, so... Um, Kurosori is like, he makes a Discord on the Kemono, like, Puri community. He hosts the Kemo Cup. Uh, so that means, uh... Also DJ, you can hear him on Furati, I know he all usually plays on the Furati. Oh. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> nice. Uh, Udo Neko, uh, uh, he creates avatars and walls. I actually was making his one of his avatars a uh, long time ago. Uh, like I think, I believe in here, um, I well, think a lot of the people that are in here have Oh, this avatar, you can even see. see. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, this one was really famous. Oh there. yeah, so yeah. Animations yeah. And they do animations for VR. Uh, Lura makes uh, also template walls. Uh, That's right. Uh, like in Japanese community, very is very popular to create like get template walls and create your own home world. And that's Lura is what's most known for. He, he also like udon chips known. and those and those. Tools oh yeah. And and Mama, Mama, Mama also is a yeah, creator working. for Vitra Market, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like four and before. Yep. Kind of yeah, yeah, Momoma yeah. has built a lot of editor extensions and tools that we all use, and the code has been transferred between yeah. a ton of different things. They're really talented people. And then, of course, all of the YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're also Mokuris. Uh, I'm, I'm, um, uh, should I do a summary hmm. of what shaders are? Uh, oh yeah, I think that'd be a good uh, idea. The application for? Yeah. Well, let's walk and okay. talk. Uh, let's go, yeah, let's go in. This door is a nice shader example as well. Yeah, for sure. Actually, yeah, well, <laughs> that would have been. Oh, I didn't think about that. This world is overwhelming. If you've never been here before, I highly recommend it. Um, I almost feel like this should be a, a lot of the people's first exposure to VR chat should be something yep. like this world, or as a Lawrence would say, uh, Treehouse in the Shade is a great example, and a lot of those mm -hmm. ones as well. Oh yeah, for sure. So uh, there's been a lot of talk about the shader community, but what like are shaders is something a lot of people don't know. Um, so when you write programs on a computer, most of the time you're writing programs that'll run on the CPU, the part that does like just normal processing. Shaders are programs which run on the graphics card instead. And so there's a whole lot of restrictions and specific things and ways that you have to go do it in order to make them accomplish their goals. Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> Um, but um, the, uh, the cool part about it is when you write a shader, it's able to run for every single pixel on the screen and it's able to run blindingly fast in comparison to normal programs because it's running on the graphics card. Mm -hmm. VR chat is really cool in that you are able to write these programs and they're able to run at full performance. So unlike scripting languages and other things like that, which are very restrictive in their performance that they can run at, when you write a shader in VR chat, that's just shared and run the fastest it could possibly run for everybody who's in the world uh, that would be able to see you if it's on your avatar or the thing in the world if it's in the world. There's also no limits. 
yeah, that's the one thing yeah. that we have oh, to yeah. limit at all. <laughs> right, for sure. And, and also, uh, while VR chat is mostly limited by processor power, um, even with most stuff that you run in VR chat, it's not as much bottlenecked by what the, the GPU is doing. So there's a lot, lot of room to play with. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, people take full advantage of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because shaders, unlike regular programs, at least to some degree, run massively parallel. So there's all these different computations that happen side by side, all at the same time, which makes it uh, so much more faster. Um, oh yeah. It's made to process huge data structures in very fast. Yeah. Like it's like what? in programs run like instructions what to do. With shaders, it's like instructions what to do with that that's it. Uh, yeah, a lot of that can be yeah. really complicated, kind of you know, in a way. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. We have a little bit of time to get through here, for sure. I definitely want to show some of the things that people here have created, and, and I'd love to get feedback from people like them, Keys, who've been here a really long time, as well, to hear what they think about Oops, some, of the, uh, some of the shaders in here, and like what, what the community inspires people to do, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, wow. I'd like to explain this here. Um, so this, uh, we think of like all the things that we see in 3D as being models or like like things that are built out of triangles or or just basic shapes that you then piece together in order to make what you see on the screen. Um, but in shaders, it's not really the same. Like you have a lot more flexibility and a lot more freedom. For instance, this right here, this whole scene, this this beautiful Mars environment is actually, I believe, only a few triangles around us. But the neat thing with the shader is it executes for every single pixel on your screen. So instead of just drawing it as part of a box, it's able to actually see where your eye is, where you hit the, the, the thing. And then from that, it's able to compute what it is that what color it should present as. So in this case, what it's doing is it's presenting to shoot a ray from your eye into each pixel on your screen where you see this landscape, and then it traces it out into the world and then decides what color that should appear as on the camera. Oh, wow. And so it's it's just a very different way of doing graphics as compared to sort of um, normal graphics where you just have triangles that get rendered to the screen. Yeah. It's drawing, and drawing usually also these kind of mountains that you see here are... Uh, the result of a uh, math f function, like it's usually a math equation um, noise. that yeah. is creates like a, a noisy pattern. So that way, even if you were to go closer to the surface, if you could get there, um, it just keeps having all of the detail because um, it's all uh, defined in math. Can you do yeah. Again? Uh, technically. Technically, like, shaders, like a program that and the stars and dust too. And simply outputs color Yeah, the stars and dust as well. Yeah. Also, so self because the trans technically on every pixel and on every frame. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 For me, uh, yeah. shaders are like black magic. Like, it's just amazing what you can do with shaders. I remember seeing someone who actually made a game, and with just shaders, which was insane. It's oh, yeah. like. Uh, like, like, for instance, if you look at the star field, it's like, uh, what if you have, um, okay, let's, let's get, uh, ignore the fact that you have to project things, but say if you have a round surface and you just divide it into very small little boxes and then you say only one in hundred boxes is able to light up and that is a star and that's basically sort of, um, uh, how a star field like that is generated. Like it has some very noisy math equation that you don't really see any pattern in. And then it just runs by all of these boxes and then says like, this is a star and this is space, this is space and this is another star. And that, that way you create like this random noise pattern. Okay. Um, which you see here, for instance. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I think it's yeah. also kind of important to say that Shaders was made because initially it's the GPUs didn't have fixed features and because of that it really was very hard to port between hardware because they, every GPU has different features so 
They figure they, they make GPU programmable, and that's how Cilia was made. Ah, I see. So everybody yeah. can build any feature on GPU. But that's why everything is now unified. Like, like for example, consoles is a great example, because consoles was like different than PC and run the games better, because there was fixed features better than PC had. Mm. Well, the sh when Shader appeared, they all kind of people compare it to PC now. <laughs> <laughs> PC is usually better than consoles. Mm. Than stuff, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, I think that's why we're starting to see these uh, games that are, are essentially built on it. So let's keep going. Yeah, let's check out the exhibit. Yeah, yeah this is not actually an exhibition. That that was just a thing between <laughs> yeah. all exhibitions. I think it's a good segue because now what you're seeing here is really where the community begins, right? Every single one of these things that you see here is effectively a booth. If you've ever seen a VCAT before, if you've ever been to uh, to VRCon, uh, every one uh, of these is a booth effectively just just so you know uh, there's there was no limit on exhibits the, the first sort of the only limit was uh 10 exhibit mm -hmm. exhibition per person and mm -hmm. you can only use some features like camera and stuff and there's no udon on the shader oh, i see yeah so it's just purely shaders like here's an example of for uh, instance the uh, that kind of hexagon stuff, but then I put it on my avatar as a. Uh, oh wow! And you can I've made so like similar equations. Yeah. Nice. The best part about these kinds of things is you can take them with you, right? So if you wanted to have an entire exhibition on an avatar, that's one of the things that VR Chat lets you do that other other things don't. And entire communities. I remember, I guess PK is a good example. He's from the original like the the. Uh, um, like the uh what was it? it was the 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 neko neko animation squad back in 20, 2017 <laughs> and like they, they would they would travel around in public worlds usually be guy and knight and they just throw these massive shader shows oh, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yeah. Please. Please. yeah like no, airplanes like, would creator. fly over oh, yeah, and for sure. that's what creates, oh, yeah. like, uh, yeah. that creates uh worlds oh really uh, worlds that are very like sh shader intensive yeah Yep. Oh, yeah, wow. I highly recommend checking out Ambient, which is their world that they made. Oh yeah, um, for sure. They also happen to be the winner of Tokyo Demo Scene Demo Sh Fest Shader Showdown. Oh yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> the, the best part about that's one of the interesting like bits of lore that a lot of people don't know is that in Tokyo Demo Fest, which is like a really well respected demo scene um, competition that they do every year. Um, the finalists for that was, you know, there was a huge number of shader creators and, and uh, people who were doing this live coding competition. We had 30 minutes to make a shader live on, mm. on stream while DJs spun. And uh, the, the final eight competitors in the finals and semifinals and winners were all VRChat players out of everyone who was there. So. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is weird. Spaghetti and, and 516 and... It's very nice. This is such a weird shader. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> so trippy. Um, this is mine. Uh, oh. And so, just another uh, <laughs> uh, basic shader where, in this case, it does the same thing where it uses your eye and the surface, but instead of like going through an implicit mathematical equation, it uses the equations that are governing uh, hexagons. Much like a uh, shader in, in the Phi 16 shader, mm -hmm. not Phi 16, Synergence's shader that we saw first, the hexagon shader. Um, and so you can kind of reuse a lot of the same principles and code in the same sorts of ways, but to mix them together to describe what you want to be able to show people in new ways. Yeah, it's really a nice fact, mm -hmm. for sure. Triangle pattern is also really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just. Yeah, I could just stare at this every day, like all day, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> oh, this is, I guess, time, a uh, good thing to mention with Audio Link, though, <laughs> is um, so within the shader system in, in VR chat, it uses Unity, which has the ability to do something called named Wait, grab passes. Is the noise breaking down? Do yeah, it's that? breaking down. Let's go switch it back up. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so the. the the neat thing is, shaders can actually communicate to each other, so you're not restricted to only be able to have, like, um, like shaders standing alone as some effect, but they can actually work collaboratively. 
So for instance, um, audio link is an, is a tool that could be okay. included in a world and then it can include audio data, which can then be used on people's avatars, like Shadow Rivers here, See? or in this case, mm -hmm. um, my shader right here. Yeah, this is uh, the data this shows in. all of put, the raw put, data. Yeah, put audio data in the texture and you can sample it and see the like, uh, texture and get audio information. Oops. I also have a different shader that actually decodes that information. Oh, wow. <laughs> the noise. Yeah. Yep. Yep, so each one of these layers is either the base, the lows, the mids, or the highs, or your treble. And each one of those yeah. things are used to influence a, a different part. It also has information on the version of AudioLink and times, which is a lot of people don't know that you can get a real time on AudioLink, <laughs> like <laughs> clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uses most, for it. Oh, yeah, most shaders that use this actually use mostly only the top part. But, uh, and uh, really the other parts, which is kind of sad, but for example, the newest Xiaomi version, the Pro version is supposed to have a spectrogram and stuff, so... Yeah, that's gonna I, get better. <laughs> yeah. it's, an, it's a. I think this is a great achievement of the shader community because everyone came together and used it, and it became a like almost like a staple that you had to have. Silent integrated it in their shader as well, yeah. um, you know, and, and we're integrating it into some other shaders, including one that Silent made as well, um, just because we need it for different purposes. And mm -hmm. it's just such a great utility that the entire community has converged on, and it's just become almost a standard in VR chat these days. Yeah. Um, One yeah, of the coolest of aspects of that yeah. is that um, at no point did VR Chat themselves have to intervene. So, like, nobody from VR right. Chat, the organization, had anything to do with having to approve anything or include anything. But instead, it include any because the VR powerful that VR Chat operates within. Um, it was able to be done completely by the creators. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I always consider VR Chat as a playground. Yeah. For the crazy stuff. Oh, it totally is. Yeah. I also got audio link on Google's. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I did <laughs> calculate. Ah! Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On Google, see. That's, that's audio link. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. See? So, oh, can I get a good, uh, good yeah, look at your goggles? Yeah, this is this is Zentos' shader here. So he's been involved in a lot of things lately and uh, and also does translation see? for PCAT and general. See, that's the auto link. Um, uh. Uh, and the goggles. And, and has built yeah, some pretty but, but also Xentos. Xentos also made that. We're going to go here. Yep. Yeah. You'll see yeah. them around there. Yeah, that's also audio link. Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool. Actually, okay. he started yeah. like not, not long ago. Actually, the Xentos, it's kind of weird because Xentos is like very advanced programmer and uh, he was like scared of shaders. Like, he didn't know how to do it. I told him, like, you're a programmer, you should. Try it, you should, you probably got there. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Usually the next day, he started to make shaders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely not gonna try try it, for sure. This one's really nice, too. Is there some normal programmers that are scared of shaders? But, uh, yeah, usually you just need to try it. Because it's, if you got the <laughs> skills, so you should... You should find yourself in shaders too, because I'm actually better in, in uh, gameplay code and stuff, logical stuff, mm -hmm. yet I end up doing sh mostly shaders in VR chat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of weird. Yeah, you do an amazing job, by the way. I don't know for sure. There's a lot of people who believe it's a shader. I think it, I think it's I think this shader is is lost so much on people um, unless you see it in VR because it it's almost like this looks yeah. the same as this until you're inside of it. That's very cute, <laughs> the shader. Looks like gummy fish. This also have an audio link, which is have oh, really? this audio link feature, which is chrono density, mm. which allows to control the speed of animation. Oh, yeah. so if you notice when the bass hits, the fish jet ahead. Oh, that's right. You're right. It's also important to know that GPU doesn't have a sense of time. Kind of. <laughs> uh, the time needs to be sent by CPU, and Unity sends the, the like clock, which is usually time when person joins the, the instance. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's why you can see some people have like, clocks counting time on how, uh, yeah, it's, uh, like time uh, when 
the I've person been in the joined. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and because it, 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 like you can make calculations that are like particular, this is literally probably three shaders, three materials, and because it's running on the same clock, yeah, uh, they can like sync to each other. Yeah, yeah. This was yeah. definitely my favorite one. One of my favorites in this. Yeah. Only issue is that uh, because uh, every for every person that clock is different, uh, the animation not sync for different person. But for example, with audio link, you got instance uh, instance yeah, timer, clock, then, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can sync it so everybody can see the same thing. Uh, like my Google, people can see yeah. the same visualization. Yeah, uh, because of that. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do with auto link, especially in club worlds. <laughs> Because they, they were going forward. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, if they're on a 2060, they probably don't want to go. So, yeah, yeah don't this, go to them. This Definitely is very don't uh, intensive. It's oh, heavy. oh, yeah. This, that. Is, this is the most, most heavy uh -oh. This is up. Give me a sec. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Well, you already like it. This, one, but this on one over screen. here is made by Silent, so it's perfect. <laughs> we, we utilized oh. this one in our, beak, in our personal beak. I know. Uh. Like, uh, this early? Okay. You should come this way uh, and and get out of that. Yeah. Keep coming this way. And get. My apologies. Um. You coming? Okay. There you go. My friends are back. Yeah. Yeah. I can. F I completely forgot about yeah, that area. Just, that mirror over there is rough. Yeah. Yep. Last time I was here, it just almost crashed me. <laughs> Yeah, it's very heavy. A 2060 isn't too bad. You've got the RAM. That's what that's what matters. Oh yeah, for sure. Likely to crash with that. Yeah, it's it, this world is a little heavy on the GPU, but as they were saying early on, VRChat is really CPU heavy, right? Yeah. And I think that you know you can get away with a lot. You can have voids like this floating around, and it's not going to hurt you, you know. Yeah. Some of these things fit into a 64K. I can actually talk a little bit about Kohak here. They've, they're a long-time VRChat creator that's been playing since pretty much the beginning of the game. 2017, 2016-ish. Uh, they created a shader that allowed you to use the Be Haptics tac um, Touch Haptics Vest. Oh, really? Uh, without having to mod the game. Um, they also built uh, a lot of things with SDK2 OSC. Um, one of the first VTuber studios inside VRChat, and they're a multi-time, every-time VCAT exhibitor, so. Wow. Yeah, I, was, I really like this grass, um, glass shader, for sure. Kohak also has a, a very extensive collection of uh, old gaming electronics that just goes just beyond. Uh, You'll see them also like at 8-Bit Cafe or... every now and then. In oh, really? Yeah, so. But it uses depth, and, uh, also, Tokyo. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it uses depth as well to reduce the scrambling. Really cool stuff. Yeah, it's pretty advanced. Very realistic. Yeah, that's nice. One of the, the, the two Sample. kind of fun aspects with regards to like this here mm -hmm. is in shaders you can grab a screenshot of what the user sees. So it includes all of the avatars and any of the rest of the world. And then you can work with that in order to do something interesting. I can demonstrate that again. <laughs> um, so if you look over here. When you switch, let's do it outside oh. of this, of this room. There you go. Yeah. Let's oh. Uh, let me show you. Oh. Did you become a cookie? For example. Oh, oh no, never no mind. No yeah. more. Because, because some will create filters like this. Oh, as oh, yeah, right. infrared. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. But yeah. Bird. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Some of the pulse effect from. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's go this way. Yeah, let's um, let's um, press Five. forward. Yeah. 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 I would love to use them at work, <laughs> but nope. <laughs> <laughs> one extra frame for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Or right, this one. These are really intense in VR. As you get into a shader like this and you walk into it. Um, you know, marching, the, yeah. the perception changes, you know, from being something that is that you're looking into to something that is looking into you in a way. Oh yeah, for sure. So many of these shaders use a technique called ray marching, which is where you have that that ray that starts at your eye and it starts to go through into the scene. 
the idea is that you have an equation that governs the surfaces of that scene, like how dense any point should be. And depending on how close a given point is on that ray as you step along to that surface, you can either step further or closer. And by having that equation define the surfaces, you're able to have a very, very simple program that can render effectively in, in to your screen what that equation looks like in 3D. Yeah. And it's basically uh, infinite amount of geometry that you're rendering, like it yeah. can have infinite complexity. Yeah, Mm, for sure. Yeah, with re uh, raster uh, rasterizing rendering, it's like not possible. <laughs> <But> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. if you want to render like uh, like ten million um, like donut shapes, that would be uh, <laughs> very hard to this do uh, with just geometry, this but this in, in nice shader, it's just. Yeah. Formula and it basically it's repeats, so you're only calculating it. Yeah. Yeah. Like what once. always gets me is that when artists get together yeah. and start doing things, For sure. or if you're an artist yourself, oh. right? You can make a lot, a lot of better. There's a lot of like really cool, like uh, technical things you can do, or like you know engineering type stuff, things you can do. But it always takes a bit of art to really, you know, make it pop. And so something like this, where you have this like amber um, monochrome screen from 1987 style you know yeah. going on in the shader yeah the, you know it really it really uh shows how um you know how the the fusion of art and and uh and design can come together for these kinds of things and that's and really that's what it comes down to we have artists that work at at vcat and shadow river is able to make you know some of the most technical things happen but we combine that with the art from our artists and it it really goes somewhere <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> like pendulum yeah, with way, different lengths uh, uh, or frames. Oh, weird. I wonder what's in this one. Yeah. Hmm. Oops. Uh, yeah. Sorry about the audience. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Okay, got my frames. Sorry. I... Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's like a... Yeah, if you see this icon on the exhibition... Oh, yeah. If you can get to Shader Fest uh, website and download the Shader and it's available. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, this is Japanese calendar. Uh, Oops. Uh, Oof. Yeah, that's one benefit of things no, is that you can here perhaps. Where? Oops, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm just getting frame drops if I look over there. Bonkers. Yeah, well, let's get past it and we'll continue on. What was this one? Yeah, oh, so just... basically they're packing Skip different the uh, time. Yeah. Oh no, it was like it was back there. It was making oh, really? it was making me lag. Yeah. There's a different person maintaining that calendar, but uh, he made a, like a Oh yeah, the like the like random generation books. Yeah. Uh, that's that's yes. yeah, that's Luda shader. He made this for his own like uh, because he makes walls, so nice. he made a shader that easily can make a variety of books depending on position. So yeah. he doesn't need to edit every texture, <laughs> uh, like cool. every book. Yeah. yeah. Nice bush shader. So uh, actually, the shader was made for world building. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, and this one's really cool. It's like a slime so shader. You, you, yeah, you can, you can. <laughs> you can paint. Yeah. So you can make a Paul print on it. <laughs> nope, he's gone. <laughs> like speed run this oh yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, this. Uh, <laughs> The shader, because uh, there's no memory on, on the shader. Uh, every frame, on every pixel, the everything resets. <laughs> so, uh, you, uh, you're using something called render the texture to... Uh, you can run run shader on the texture, but then you can sample again. Uh, so you can get the, like, you can... Uh, 
information from the previous frame. So with that, most simplest application is that you can get the previous frame of color <laughs> and uh, create this kind of motion blur effect. Yeah, it's really nice, for sure. But a lot of people use it to store memory, like, you will see example of that very soon. <laughs> oh yeah, this is really nice yeah. too. It's like a, it's like you're moving, but you're not. Yeah, it's like, yeah remember we can play it with parameters, like, yeah, you, if, like, over here and then you can... Yeah, increase the speed. The, yeah, this is definitely would be good for like a ride. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Oof. Okay. Not too bad. There we go. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, it doesn't seem. Uh, if you can't handle this room, it's okay. We can. Oh no, I'm fine. Through. I'm fine. Okay. Whoa. Oh. What did you change? Oh, that is a cool effect. Oh, lifetime is zero, so it generates. But then it oh yeah. The surface. That's cool. Like now it's uh, oh. slow, but then if I have lifetime all the way at zero, that's pretty. So one of the fun things you can do with um with cameras is you can also get the depth. So this exhibit here uses cameras to be able to tell. Oh, I believe it's cameras. Better projector. Um, but to be able to tell where our avatars are, and then um, by having that, it's able to generate data. To describe where all of these particles will be oh and then those particles uh can then be like the positions can be computed and then another shader can take that data and actually render the particles to your screen uh, yeah. yes Textures are are basically the the hard drive of a shader. Oh yeah. Memory. Yeah. Infinite space. <laughs> I mean, there's like the rain. Yeah, this is like, Shadow Spy maybe was made for, for, you know, for, for the surfaces of the models. But oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but uh, because you can do anything, a lot of people do look of hackish things, but yeah, that's like prime example why a clear was made so you can make wet bodies on the model. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, oh, and there's like a boundary. Mm -hmm. So the closer you're the brighter it is. It's using death map. The death map is like a. Yeah, it's, almost, it's almost identical uh, to the one you the play surface. in VR dashboard. Yeah. yeah. And there's like this ring of fire. That's nice. Oh, this one's very nice. Yeah. The types of things that these types of shaders make make absolutely awesome are things like movie worlds yeah, 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 for yeah. that extra sense of mm -hmm. you yeah. get from a real projector screen. For sure. Yeah, unless you project like textures on the other people <laughs> yeah, oh yeah textures or anything yeah, yeah it's great to have the thing is it requires shader to generate death map so sometimes people with the shader that doesn't generate death map that makes them like transparent on that <laughs> which is kind of weird oops oh, it's yours oh yeah <laughs> Um, so one of the things that frequently people do, um, with like, uh, in, in 3D games is they'll use textures, but, uh, instead of using like a file, which would need to define a texture, you can just kind of create that on the fly. So here, just by using a program, I can get, generate something that looks like a rock texture and it doesn't repeat. It just keeps going and going and going. And it, um, it's, uh, it's also able to say like animate over time. Um, and that's just something you can do with shaders is instead of having to have these texture maps, which have to get downloaded and saved and transferred and stored on your computer, 
uh, you can just compute the textures real time. Yeah. These kinds of noise maps become really useful for all kinds of things too. Like if you wanted to simulate wind moving through grass, you could use this texture to influence the vertices that are going through that. Or if you wanted to create a quasi-random cloud setup and increase and decrease the speeds of the clouds going by, you could do that. If you wanted to create layers of depth, all of these noise maps, especially procedurally generated ones, are really useful for this. And it also so people like take allows these, you, you know, and remix it. It also allows you to uh, make these things on the fly, and then you uh, free up space for other models that might need actual mm -hmm. hand painted textures. So it's everybody uh, wonders why video games are so space. big these days. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's using textures. Yeah, so you can just right. you can just tile them. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a bit. Oh yeah. Akimin is a. He created the uh, world and we get uh, the high school mm -hmm. one. Oh, really? Yeah, he also makes the template world. Yeah. Oh. Um, and a bunch of other things, too. He worked on yeah. the PKC's world as well and, and some of their custom um, reproductions that they've done. And a few other things like that as well. Akimen is, is really talented. Yeah. In terms of, they really love PBR. Kind of stuff, yeah, because I met him. This next one is uh, special. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a silence shader. <laughs> and there's Lee. Yeah, you might have heard of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the king, the king, the king of the king, the king, king and queens of of uh, of the party community are all now using this shader everywhere. Oh yeah, that yeah. actually um it makes it makes for an excellent event shader. Yeah, Japan sure is actually using them now in their world. Actually, he's I mean, a big ad. Yeah. Has the yeah. Shader on there. Uh, that might be Most definitely. Oh yeah, actually. Yeah. 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 Feel free to describe it. This actually yeah. got used um, uh, with silent permission, of course. She let us use this shader for Arc System Works as well. Hmm. Here, this is uh, a shader that runs the. Uh... Oh yeah, parallax uh -huh. in VR is magic. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it really does. For sure. Especially two D games as well. Yeah. But it just works so well in VR. Mm hmm Oh yeah, this uh, avatar also uses the audio link. Uh what Silent Yeah. Shader. Oh it's a great it's a great shader. I mean really there's so many things you can do with it. <laughs> the parallax in, in video games, um, like especially side scrolling fighters and things like that, it, it, it lends itself extremely well to that kind of thing as well. Right. So, uh, what I have on here as well, there's a texture the back. front and the back. It's sort of changed how the oh. response to the audio is. Mm. Oh, nice. So you got all these squiggles. They are basically an offset in the delay. So the, the waves sort of squiggle around all the, the slide fest patterns. Oh, that's very yeah. nice. Yeah. And by the way, I'm I'm just looking respect so, respect for Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> just yeah. making sure. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I I see what you're doing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, um, how do you call it? Um, if you look at the texture, they're basically just a bunch of red, green, and blue um, gradients going to black, uh, and then that gradient uh, causes the sort of a time delay between when the pulse arrives so things travel along all of these patterns yeah it's really cool oh this, yeah um this this shader here also was done by mm -hmm. uh shadow River for uh, uh, a specific effect oh. at instella scalabri which is a mercury uh, this is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i made uh I made mean, that's uh, yeah sky shader that is like it just has a play on the uh, that's pretty and generates the moon it generates the moon, oh. uh, also the stars, and uh, because the main reason why I wanted to create this shader is to create a um, metaverse because the canonically Star Scrabby is like near Meta Koletka and Meta Koletka like it's a sort of like origin point of metaverse so I wanted to like represent that <laughs> so uh, occasionally every like every like at least few times per minute the metaverse shows up and creates like a trail and stuff for now. It looks, uh, it looks uh, awesome. It is. It is. Yeah. It's just pretty. Yeah, also, <laughs> also, yeah, 
also, also, I made it so metal is coming out of direction of the portal to the world. <laughs> and also, the version, yeah, version, ver version, version, the world also takes the sky, the sky, which is painted, kind of painted for, uh, and it actually detects the clouds and hides the metal oh. uh, uh, behind the clouds. It is also good. Of course, I couldn't put it here. Oh, yeah, here, yeah. This, this whole the neat thing about this this shader too is it was entirely inspired by the Mokuri universe and the community behind it, right? So there's a storyline oh, behind every one of these worlds, and to build this shader, the way that it was, including this shader too, the direction of the meteor is coming specifically from the portal. All of that is based on the lore that was built by the community that built Mokuri, right? So mm. that that inspired the shader itself. So it does take communities to come up with this stuff. It's like you know, it's art. <laughs> uh, that's our death map. I actually shows like it's actually colorized. Normally it's like wh white and black. Oh no, you see the avatar like, shows, breakdown. Shows. Oh no, I'm cheating. Actually, that's not our death map. Uh, sorry, that's right. not our death map. But, but uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I need arms. I'm not sure if anybody here knows, but I. I, I still am surprised by these because I still don't know how these are done. Oh yeah, this one. Mm. Like, yeah, this one's gorgeous. I... Oh, you can't pick it up. Much? Darn. Oh. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's a. I think it's a. Uh, like a geometric. Is function. it depth? Co ah. It is depth correct. <laughs> this one too. See. Is also depth correct. Yeah, right. yeah it's like a crystal like ball. Where yeah, you you'll have to like hold the camera up yeah. there to actually see it. It's grass in the bottom. So I'm not sure how you would uh <laughs> grass moving in the wind. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the downside is of having a small avatar. <laughs> um fire. Uh, yep. And more uh, audio link effects running in here as well. Yeah, this is a good example of it. Just kicking in. Yeah, it really is. I love these. I forget what these are called again. I Silent and I figured it out a while ago, and I can't remember the name of it. The, Martin this, Cubes? This particular, no, I mean this particular presentation of oh. a shader. There's a word for for that uh, material box, or like the material sphere, right? There's a specific word for it. <laughs> uh, what kind of sphere? The, oh, the sphere used stuff. to show these off things, a material, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, there's... these are material sample spheres. Uh, yeah, same. I guess there's a specific word for it, but yeah, it... <laughs> Demkeys, you're you're uh, you're in stealth mode there in that one. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is interesting. Um, Norden uh, kind of pioneered using lighting um, as a sort of additive thing, whereas like normally lights in Unity are very slow if they're real-time lights or you have to use baked lighting. But uh, one of the neat things is you can do uh, lights which are just kind of um, sort of drawn onto geometry. And that can even apply to geometry that's intersecting with it. We'll see in another room uh, where there's a tree where um, where the, the, the lighting is actually just being pasted onto the actual surfaces. And now this sort these sorts of techniques are now widely used in a lot of club worlds and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So basically allow you to make it uh, run more efficient. Yeah, without needing real time light. It's like a flat, probably automatic camera and uh, because of death map, uh, everything that other than player is black. But when player comes in, there's a white, white pixels appearing on death, death map, and you, that, that, this way you can detect the collision kind of, uh, detect the people on it, and it creates this kind of effect. Yeah. You can also make similar yeah. shaders. Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if we should beeline it to somewhere or what, what you think would make most. Yep. Oh, that's... Oh. I was a chief, laugh it up. <laughs> one is oh. really, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, it, it's like the one thing that's different than anything else here. Yeah. That's true. Is that in green? green though. Right? I, think I don't it's remember. In blue. I think it's in blue. I think it's in blue as well. Um, right. mo most of my shaders are in blue. 
Oh, really? <laughs> then let's go blue then. There is a secret. I, I don't know if we'll have time to get through everyone today, but if you do come here on your own to everybody who's watching, um, look, look, you want wait, to... wait, wait, wait. Peace light, peace light, peace light. Look mm. what happened on the, oh, yeah. the logo. You see the red line? That's because we passed the red line. Oh, really? You complete all of them, uh, the secret unlocks. Oh, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. You have to go to all the exhibits, including oh, wow. Alpha. And then after you're done, there's a secret that unlocks. Oh, that's really cool. Yep. you where all of your weight painting is wrong. <laughs> hey. Mm. Yeah. This uh, blue is also um, really high performance. That is cool. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, photo uh, photo transition. Transition. I made it's not, uh, actually it's not completed in the way that it is here, but uh, actually completed more. And you can download it too. Uh, uh, actually, full version is more than we get uh, 2021. Yeah. But it's like a grid transition with uh, like creative blocks, and you can change the patterns and way uh, the blocks is animated. You can also make mm -hmm. that and modify UV, so you can see UV actually zooming in with the block too. Yeah. yeah. Shadow really likes to take pictures in VR chat and has developed a few shaders that allow you to use the Steam VR 3D screenshots and. Mm -hmm. uh, um, just collect tons of photos together. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one I really like with yeah, the double normal effects. It like, looks like yeah, a painting. It really does look like like a real painting. Yeah, I, I agree. It's definitely a good painting. Yeah, these are gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with shaders you can compose shaders, uh, uh, textures, because you can sample texture or whatever you want. Oh, and you can the like compose mm -hmm. them and animate them like this. The, one yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, world, the world's name is called ShaderFest 2021. Yes. Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, VRChat, um, if you guys don't know what, um, welcome to VRChat, even though the name is called VRChat, you can still play on desktop as well, and even on your phone as well. Um, yeah. Definitely recommend checking this world out if um, if you can. But born it's kind of a little bit beefy world. <laughs> it's like um, 200 megabytes. Runs on the phone. It does run on the Quest though. Yeah, and also, oh yeah, and also Quest as well. <laughs> yeah, you can see, you can see a lot of these shaders, like even if, um, even if you're remoting in that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. No, it's not too bad. There's a lot of, uh, you can run things like, yeah. um, uh, Steam Link. The Quest users, uh, uh, like, just pure Quest, uh, doesn't load these shaders. Yep. You will, you will need this. Because, uh, the Quest version of VRChat, uh, does have a limitation on shader hmm. usage. There's another one. Yeah, at least Silent. Silent. Most of them work on yeah. PC, but they do mm -hmm. need single-pass stereo. Oh, yeah, Silent's, yeah. Silent's, uh, Pixel Standard Shader. This one's great, too. Yeah. Another Prelex this one. It's yeah, actually kind I like of, it. yeah. It's kind of important because uh, normally, oh. almost all games, oh. when using like like pixelated <laughs> stuff in VR, it looks very harsh to the eyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Silent went in and calculated the math. Oh, you're saying stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make the edges smooth. I almost want to combine this shader <laughs> with a CRT, mm -hmm. you know, like a CRT overlay. Does this overlay. also uh, use the derivative to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Mm, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm a huge fan of that older pixel art, Rhea. Yeah? Oh, yeah, you same. Um, with, yeah, uh, with like, you know, games, awesome. like, games like King's Quest and other things that were using, like, uh, oh, yeah. repeating, like, parallax for waterfalls and other, other early graphics techniques like that. It look, looks really good for that. Oh, yeah, for sure. You too can get your own oily, oily Pikachu. That's also your... Oh, yeah. That's also silence. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I do recommend oh, checking yeah. checking the shader out for sure. Um, I actually use it a lot in my worlds. Cool. Don't play it. Uh, <laughs> don't play it. Mm -hmm. 
there's a glitch <laughs> server. Shatter okay, generator, okay. a bunch of different uh, map uh, of ships, and then you can just... Oh, what would you have it set up? I'm sorry. I... I 100% agree with you. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, I really love the shader. I see. Um... Yeah, it just makes everything look so nice. In VR. Oh, it's not there. No. Yeah. But definitely check this out, if you're a world creator. I always tell people to not play with it because I set up the full parameters oh. to be nice. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's fine. I like the Game Boy okay. version. Oh, wow. There you go, <laughs> Game Boy. The <Yeah>, GPA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. I only changed so, so the color. Hasn't... I only changed the color. No, let me explain. Can you guys let me explain? Uh, you got okay. it. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you guys... no, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a difficult shader to configure because it's very it's got a lot of different options and patterns. Yeah. Uh, I want to know why I'm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Take your time. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, dithering shit is like uh, it takes a pattern like grid of pixels uh, with uh, uh, that lets up on different order depend on brightness and it creates like dithering effect. Uh, the effect was originally created to create uh, uh, like in the past there was only like sixteen colors, for example, no monitor uh, like graphics. So to create illusion of more colors. Uh, then, uh, the, the, some people invented that uh, if you make it so a few pixels around it uh, have different color than others, and uh, the more, yeah, it creates illusion of that there's more color than actually is. So mm -hmm. you can actually see it if you change the change the, the color mode. You can see that. Mm -hmm. Over here, it's actually it is different. Actually, reducing the number of colors to like the numbers of like color tones, uh, but in reality, we can see you can actually see like there's actually more colors. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it's like yeah, it's like using a quirk of the way yeah. we perceive it. This is yeah. actually set up to four. This is actually set up to four, but it's also p four per channel, so it's like sixteen around. Yeah. Hmm. Kutal uh, means like because you know we've got green, red, red, green, and blue, yeah. Yeah. So you can see if you increase uh, the number of tones, we actually see the. Yeah. Okay, I actually see it when you nice. reach to a single one. Yeah. It's actually on and off on every channel. So it's like four, uh, four colors. You can see, you can actually kind of see more colors. What early VR yeah. headsets also looked like with yeah. too much magnification. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you can also, yeah, you have, oh, 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 you also have a gameplay mode. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you can use different dithering patterns. So, you can, yeah, create like this, like, uh, it's kind of looks like tone, uh, tone shader a little bit, if you don't have and you can change the resolution of the pixels, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, no. yeah if you make oh, it to black and black, yeah. yeah, it kind of looks like tone shader, which is like not uh, the completely different shader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is cool. Speaking of, speaking of something that's great for the community too, Silence Filamented shader here is taking off like a rocket right now. Oh yeah. Um, just about every world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm Japan one of them. Finally <laughs> figured it out. Standard equals crap <laughs> because because we now have this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It is a wonderful thing. It is. Yeah, in terms of detail, it is so it is so so nice to be able to actually have you know proper proper depth normals height maps that work, all of that. I'm gonna have to start using filamented on my avatars too. I keep <laughs> seeing it now in various worlds because they're all set up for filamented on their on their uh, PBR textures for the world itself. So it looks so absolutely amazing in uh, <laughs> yeah. in the uh, in the actual world itself, right? Yeah. Or on the avatars now as well. It's, it's just it's just become good. Yeah, I'm actually using it. Oh. All right, the next oh, cool room fun. has two exhibits I want to explain. Oh, sure. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to maintain frame rate, but let's see if you can. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Fast track. <laughs> okay. You will likely hitch when... 
memory, but if you hit, it should be okay. Oh, not too bad. It's not too bad. Okay, are you good now? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, probably shouldn't go in here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, this is two more of my shaders, like this one here. Um, one of the things that I had fun with oh. was um, that that same shader, you can actually view it from the side, and you can see what the inside of the material looks like because you can see it from the sides. Um, this is the same shader that, that was earlier that I wrote. It looks nice. Um, sure. One of the things I mentioned earlier was the new lighting systems. Um, so this one here, uh, Silent also wrote uh, the core of that lighting system. And you can see that the uh, this has a lot of light. And Unity normally wouldn't be able to handle anything like this. But what, what it does is it looks at the depth map, so it sees what geometry is there, and it only bothers applying the lights to the pixels that you can actually see that would be affected by those lights. So it's a much, much more efficient way of doing, like, lighting. Yeah, it's very highly, pretty. Highly underutilized, and Fake Lights has been out now for two, three years, I would mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I had only heard about it this last year, and I've already, oh, really? uh, it's been used in two worlds uh, that I've been involved with now. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. This is... So, to go, oh, it's a city. Is, oh. Yep. That's, wow. It's gorgeous. <laughs> There's a there's actually a uh, there's a website that's related to this shader that kind of explains what's going on too. That's right. MLT. So .co.jp. Yeah. This, this is a really big. really cool thing, um, which I'd like to explain. It'll take a moment. Oh, go for um, it. But but the, the the thing here is this is actually an eight core computer running right now in the video card. Oh, really? Um, so what it is is this texture that you see here you can go zoom in or out or whatever um is the memory of that computer and so the the memory inside of the computer is all represented with individual pixels um where a pixel is a byte or a, uh it, it's four bytes of memory it's actually over here and yeah over here it's the memory that you can see the well memory. yeah no the whole thing is the memory the whole thing is the memory but then up here if you look on this first line these lines here these all are the actual code that's being run so inside of the system memory in this texture is the actual assembly code the machine language that's being executed and for, for each one of the cores they all have a state which is represented down here you can actually see like what each one of the cores is doing um actually maybe that that's different but anyway, up here the, you can actually see what each one of the cores are the doing memory, like, yeah uh, oh yeah uh, yeah uh, on the left, you see basically the the bits like changing and, color rapidly. You can zoom in on that. And what's fun with that is, is this eight core computer, which is being emulated on your video card in a shader, is then ray tracing the scene with a bunch of spheres. So as time goes on and on and on, more and more of this actually becomes ray traced. So it's it's a, a program that's written on a virtual computer that's running in the video card, ray tracing a 3D scene, and that's what we get to see. That's so insane. I, um, I know that that's confusing, <laughs> but it's it's really one of crazy. the first demonstrations of this shader I've ever seen was they actually someone actually just full on loaded Tiny Linux onto it and just ran <laughs> Tiny Linux. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, Pi is, Pi is amazing. <laughs> yep. So Couldn't do much. <laughs> yeah, did run. Like, we don't Does run it? Yeah, Doom will it? Will it run Doom? <laughs> yeah, run Doom on no, Linux on a shader. It will not Probably. Run. <laughs> it will not this, run. I mean, maybe shader. like a quarter of a frame per second. <laughs> this shader here well, is actually lost on most people. The trick is you gotta you gotta peek your head in. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. <gasps> oh, <that's clever. laughs> oh! Oh! Wow! <laughs> Yeah, it looks great from the inside. <laughs> For sure. Let me explain. Bob. Yeah, you got it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, 
photo shader. Uh, it's also a kind of open uh, photos. So it's a geometry shader. Geometry sh uh, shader is like uh, uh, because there's uh, three like uh, main type of shaders. Pixel shader is something like pixel and uh, uh, like has the color. A vertex shader is how to convert the vertices. And geometry shader is uh, very special because it, uh, it applies on every triangle. But not only that, it lets you clone clone the tri uh, clone the triangles and uh, cancel the drawing on them too. So uh, actually, what you see is actually a sphere. Like uh, in uh, for CPU, this is a sphere. But my shader takes triangles from that sphere and uh, puts them like it shows them uh, like a rail, and it can be even infinite. Uh, yeah, as much as there's triangles on the sphere, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, this is actually interesting. What you you see is infinitely like scrolling, but in reality, you see the same triangles, and they going back and forth, just swapping pictures, textures on them. And it's also a spreadsheet, uh, so it takes from the spreadsheet like changing cubic uh, technique. Uh, actually, not change. Okay. It doesn't change the texture, it changes the UV, which display different parts of the textures. <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah. So it's like it one big a, texture, it, right? Yeah, it also have a flickable support, which okay, allows to play right? like, animation by switching the those UVs very quickly. So you can hear. And also, uh, you cannot see on the stream, but you can no. see it on VR. It also have a stereo support. Uh, which means that uh, so uh, when you take a picture with Steam VR, it takes the uh, 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 picture like from the both pictures. eyes, and your your uh, your brain have a natural ability to like takes the picture and create uh, from those two pictures uh, detect the depth, like uh, see perspective in 3D. So if you're gonna display when you're gonna show those two pictures. On each eye, because on shader you can detect which eye sh shader is rendered, and you display two You're different just uh, sliding away. pictures on both eyes. You you will see 3D, and this is not like special calculations. It's simply showing two different pictures, mm. and the rest of this uh, like done by your brain, and you see in 3D. And yeah, so if you get really you close see, to these, you'll see you'll see them in 3D, but yeah, you can't see it with the camera you, obviously yeah. on stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's also the reason why you per uh, see the depth in VR. It's exactly the same reason. Because yeah. of this shader, um, Shadow was able to like assist us with uh, creating like a 3D projection from a live video. It's with not Alpha the shader. Kind of two... I mean, it was well, no, because of yeah, it was, it was a different shader, but the concept is oh. what in was intrigued yeah. us, right? Mm -hmm. But it's really neat to yeah, see but... these up close because yeah. of the 3D effect. Yeah. Also. Also, uh, this lets you, because it's programmable with progress, you can make uh, UI stuff and also using, uh, you also can make it on Avatar. Uh, the entire goal was to make, uh, fit a lot of pictures <laughs> on the, <laughs> on the like single Avatar. I actually have a sample Avatar, uh, which is very, well, very quick. Yeah. And I don't need to uh, calibrate. Oh. I think he did, yeah, he had to go, he had a hard stop in an yeah. hour. Oh. It's totally fine. Oh, you need to hard stop on the hour? He did, yeah. No, no, Lord did. Yeah. But, uh, 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 yeah. yeah. There's, there's still and you can of... fit a lot of Actually, pictures. Actually, Angrist uh, is wait. on its way as well. You can fit a lot of pictures on the avatar. Like, oh, wow. The shape That's there. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, useful for demonstrating uh, things. Oh, hey there, Stabby. Yep. Hey. Yeah, so yeah. Can... Oh yeah, this is Angry. Uh, oh, Angry is yeah. also makes shaders. Oh. Uh, Welcome to the stream. Yeah. Yeah, I actually got something's kind of custom on me right now. The uh, dress thing's a custom wireframe add-on for Piomi. Mm -hmm. Did That's you also do the, the thing with audio like... link to do blend shape encoding, right? Oh yeah, that's for... also mine. Yeah. Uh, the thing... well, well, we can't show it off right now. I don't think there's audio. There's audio no, link in is. this world, yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is it actually doing something? Oh yes. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, running uh, oh. a signal. Yeah, uh, let me we, check the settings, but I think my ears should be bouncing then. Yep, they are. Yeah. yeah okay. Good stuff. Yeah. That... Oh, lag. But that's another thing that's like the communities are built around like 
extending specific shaders too, whether it's Kwiomis or Silence or anybody else, or White Flares, anybody who has a, like a shader ability to extend it, communities will form around that type of like development and build things, extensions to those shaders, which is fantastic. Yeah, I definitely like the modular shader system though that Poyomi's using. He, he may not have wrote it initially, but it's still fucking amazing. Like uh, just being able to uh, drop in a module and if you're careful about how you make it, it doesn't really matter what else was there. Mm -hmm. You now have something special. It, it just Sorry, adds it, yeah. also have kind of stuff that got mm -hmm. like, Yep, like the one oh, no. thing that was talking yeah. about. <laughs> it was a little bit different because oh. uh, Data from a um, past Chad, are you, I think you've been corrupted. What? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's Mochi. He, he, if, if you've ever been in some club, uh, he probably made shaders. He, he works with the uh, club community to make shaders. Yep. Um, yep. Kai, Kai, and, uh, Kai and, and Sly from Slyfest, they, yeah, they really do. Yeah, uh, by the way, he could make a ten, like different exhibit for each, but he decided to make one single exhibit of all the shaders because there's like mm -hmm. ten exhibits per person. Yeah, and, but he decided to make one single exhibit and put all the shaders in a single one. <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I do love I do love the the, the look of uh, Mochi Shader, and if you've got a world that's only using one, there's a lot of cool things you can do, like the screen space reflections that are built in there. It can be heavy, but if you're not if you don't care as much about performance and more about the way it looks, it's a great it's a great shader for that. Oh yeah, for sure. <sighs> Magic particle. I'm always frustrated. <laughs> I can't ever be satisfied with not just off the shelf solution. <laughs> like the world I'm playing with making right now, I require the uh, the pipes that run from one from like top to bottom in the world to go from you know this basically cartoon down to realistic. I think, oh, really? I think the one thing that uh, Silence Magic That's Particle cool. here needs is yeah. I know you've got a little bit of a wiki on it, but I feel like it could be utilized a lot more if people knew what you could do with it, right? Oh, yeah. This is an excellent shader, but it's it's uh, a little, like, it's one of those ones that's a little underutilized. Hmm. I gotta say, and there's also basically no, nothing here. Magic particles, knees from one. Yeah. Yep. Well, it is. It that is mostly. Hard to use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You should hits. really work on the um, more rich text. Uh, mm -hmm. In these uh, worlds, the, yeah, the situation, yeah. I hope so too. I hope so too. But yeah, silent. Th I think this shader can be used. Like I, I definitely found a lot of interest in it. It's just a matter of teaching people how to use it, right? Yeah, I think so too. I think that they should do that. We spend a lot of time um, at VCAT with the translation team now. We, I think, like half of the work uh, ends up. Thank going you, thank you for coming, Surreal Alien. A lot of tools nice. that we've shared with the community. And I hope you had a good time at, on the stream. Um, watching the stream, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love me some tesseracts. Yeah. Oh, that's a tesseract. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so trippy. <laughs> Do you use a wrist beam for, for access overlay? I use a wrist beam for access overlay. I mean, who, <laughs> who, who don't? At this point. Oh. Oh, and there's like a clock over here. It's yeah, yeah, it's for, for, right. for access of light. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, do you can add this? Yep. Ooh, I like to take this yes. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't <laughs> actually have access overlay though, so highly okay. recommend. I like. See? It's a kaleidoscope. Best overlay. What's it's that? I like kaleidoscopes. To... Oh, that is really cool. Maybe if Oculus desktop is better than Oculus, but accessible is the best we can get for index and size. And there's a yep. kaleidoscope. I wonder, I've always wondered if anyone knew exactly what was causing the oddball, like, um, vertical noise that happens in this shader. It's really, really cool, but I don't know if it's there to simulate what an actual 3D photo frame oh. looks like. 
or if it's just there because I don't have anti-aliasing on. <laughs> I mean, an actual 3D photo frames, not something you'd really want to simulate. I like only I'm aware of one company that does it. It'd yep. be like yeah, saying, one. How... "Fuck, I should mm -hmm. buy one though. I kind of want one." <laughs> yeah, they, I, I, I found the perfect shader for this avatar. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes, the foggy car. You gotta go fast. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that is a cool one. Yeah, it looks. It's making me hungry though. But the question is, is like, are the artifacts just something that happened in the translation, or are they intentionally added? Hey, that's the I wonder if the, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. I wonder if they oh, actually show up like that because it, I mean the technology is pretty, pretty oh, tough. Okay, oh, camera. I mean, I'll also say that. Oh, that's cool. The tech, that would be a good enough rendition. Mm-hmm. Like these visualizers. Oh. Uh, it's kind of cute. Texture map. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Oh wow. Actually, it is actually like a camera. That is very subtle, like this this UV projected. Oh, there you go, gotcha. Oh, this is a great screenshot, right? This is my outloading shader. This is a shader you create a different visualization because uh, the problem with outloading is that yeah, a lot of people like on avatars, uh, there's not like uh, in order to fully use the uh, audio link, you need like very complex shader. Uh, so that's what I kind of did. So it lets you create a uh, different visualization. So this is taking the same shader with different configurations. Cause like four layers you can use for different things and apply different uh, audio link data on it. Yeah. And you can uh, uh, it, use different color it also sources, gets... different textures, and you also can have different UV sources, including the texture, which is, yeah, like over here. I actually take a screenshot of UV map, and then mm -hmm. uh, use it as a UV, <laughs> so it's like reproduced. Uh, like, uh, I, I, I simply make a shader that shows UV map of the model, take a screenshot, and then use that as a texture, so to, I can use it as a UV map on the shader. And the only issue is that it, it can't be compressed, or else it kind of has a lot of distortions. Hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting. Like, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> you can pick this one up. You can. They revealed this one yeah. first time at uh, uh, VCAT 6. Oh. Yeah. That's it. It's like kind of not complete and no documentation. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, I oh, know it's good. It's, it's just amazing. Funny you're complaining about avatars in Audio Link, and I think I probably have. Uh, Probably I the most complain. processing audio link for anybody else. <laughs> like this one actually in the vertex shader tries to find the average audio link value. Hmm. You gotta combine this one with your pixel. With your pixel shader. This one. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Like a <laughs> OTV. Yep. You gotta, so you bang, on, you bang on the top of it. <laughs> yeah. I think, you might, yeah. I think you need to bang it harder. It's the people that set up the audio link tablets in the worlds. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it tends to be really heavy. You can do it without uh, the grab pass and just apply the material instead. But yeah. It's reflex. You know, the, the funny thing about reflexes shaders, too, is that they're always so subtle, but always so advanced at the same time. <laughs> you know? No. Yeah, well, what? Because oh, what does this one specifically do? Uh, does it it's, ray march uh, it's, or uh, anything? Or? It has a pickup on it, but it does not have dynamic backbone. <laughs> There's that's that's one oh. thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so the dynamics is all done through shader. Oh. Yep. Oh, oh, so what? Nice. Uh, if you see audio, you can you see it from my audio shader? Stuff uh, like that. Like something called sense. color code. Which is kind of mm -hmm. which creates like based on sound, it's just a different color. 
And it's this IT Charles that implemented it on the audio link. He actually yep. invented this kind of visualization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he like fun of it, he implemented the audio link, everybody can use it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, the color cord I think was something like that Charles had worked on even before VR chat, I think. So color cord so so the person who was with us who I invited last minute, um, is part of the reason why this exists. Hmm. Big, big part. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. And that whole community is huge. Like the uh, like the audio link shader community is is really come together oh, no. to build things, and everyone is using it now. So it is a it is a wonderful thing. Well, except Japanese people. Japanese people still die Not yet. Though. They're gonna get there. Yeah, They're yeah, gonna get yeah. there. They see my stuff and they go, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Like, this is like, audio like, like Western <laughs> right now. Hmm. Yeah, yeah which is a shame. Yeah, I love it. Oh, wow. Well. Well, I say, by implementing yeah, audio link in the world. There's a camera and you can play. It's actually similar Did anyone to ever... lines of the TV because... All <laughs> yeah, it, it reminds me of a Panasonic, uh, what is it, the Panas... Yeah, back when they used to use, like, filters, every, like, every three filters. Every works like that, yeah. Yeah, but you remember, do you remember the game Manhunt? Like Oh yeah. Nope. No. <laughs> I remember that game. The LED from Manhunt is like exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah CRT, I mean, all CRT was like oscilloscope and actually was a beam that coming from... Like, like, <laughs> Add some subtitles. Uh, yeah. Graphics. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, graphics and that's kind of similar to that. And it looks so good. Also, uh, <laughs> you know what? Oh, Etty does so on TV. Oh, there's the camera. That's cool. Words, words, words. <laughs> <laughs> I love the curvature of the screen too. That's oh yeah, too. yeah. It was like those yeah. kind of screens. Wait, wait. I can, uh, this funny thing about this one it ex on the text over here it explains that uh, it heats up your room uh, by making your GPU hotter because when you come closer, it actually makes your GPU like being <laughs> used and it actually lags. <laughs> so it makes the GPU hotter and it's actually warmer, yeah. That's how it's explained, and you know, laughing here, because... Oh. I actually made creator here, and he explained that. Yeah. Oh, a lightsaber. <laughs> I mean, um, heat projector. Projection. Hm. Oh, these are fun. I'm actually annoyed by that. It's I tried to do that in my arm, and I couldn't find a way. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's uh, creating spreadsheets. Ah, I've actually never like seen the, uh, him do that. The lightning bolt you see in there is supposed to have a similar effect, and I couldn't make it happen. How big is this texture? Like 4K oh. or 8K or something? So it has the power now. Oh, that's what it does. It's also if you... <laughs> yeah, that's true too. I guess if you have um, if you have texture filtering on, it might not be as bad, but it like it, it's also sampling all layers because if you pull out your camera it's also doing that and it's doing the yeah. private layer for your controllers and things too <laughs> it, it, it creates a spreadsheet of previous oh. frames so you can like, oh. sample them like this one takes the rest one from memory so it actually creates delay but you can combine a few of those and it creates kind of motion blur effect interesting uh, <laughs> uh, there's multiple of us yeah and if you read every one, uh, every frame, you would create like proper, uh, you know, motion blur effect. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's using the yeah, render textures. Yeah, render textures like memory of, <laughs> of yeah. Yeah. Rakes. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll have to take a look. With 16 gigs of RAM, we yeah, should be doing a lot better than that. It's uh, it them also up gonna create a problem because Why are you here if you don't want to look at Phantom the, Traders? The thing that you no, want no, to I mean like the... Oh, that's okay. Uh, We're getting close to the uh, to the edge there. It is now 1 a.m. Oh, yeah. Probably a good idea to, to, oh, yeah. to call it really soon, so... Yeah, for sure. Um, that's actually a good segue. Yeah, I think this is a uh, go, um, go uh, way to end it. Let's go to Alpha then. Yeah, Oh yeah, I suppose I mean, we can do that. Oh that sure. Really light too. Turn them off by okay, let's go. You can turn them on individually as you can uh, reach so them. Very like not that you block I mean, them out. So this is, the, the, by the way, this is like second edition of Shader Fest. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the first one uh, was only like this exhibition you've seen, but in this, in this, in this is special. It actually. Mm -hmm. 
you have uh, space for very big exhibitions that takes entire room of space. It kind of works like the full cube in the market. So it allows like without any size limit to create like big exhibitions and that's what Alpha is. Actually, so the there, best there was like that. Yeah, there was that in first edition, but it wasn't as like, like this, yeah. It wasn't as grand. The best part about this elevator is looking out the elevator as you go up, though, I gotta say. <laughs> it is it is gorgeous. It shouldn't be um, not too long. Oh, no. Oh, I only see a black on the camera. Thing. Yeah, it's actually... Yeah? Yeah, yeah it's all black. <laughs> Unfortunately. Normally... It, uh, normally we would be shaking because if you would be in an elevator and you yes, it would like screw the physics but what, what oh this is pretty like, you know, so. here's where it gets fun this is you all ready yeah, go for it yeah, yeah. Ooh. Here we go. oh the there's a lot of really cool people here towel towel cloud gets used absolutely everywhere they've done every skybox uh, for oh. vket and they okay, that the shader one. is is noise based. Ah. Here we got grass. Yeah, let's now go to the towel then. Clouds. Oh. clouds again. Yep. Yeah, the towel cloud here yeah, is, so is uh wait, wait, yeah. Wait, wait, yeah, so Yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can control like night and day and it will affect if you have real time lighting on, um, uh -huh. or if you're using the um if you're using uh, a skylight probe with um uh with uh bakery you can actually have it like in affect the world in real time as well oh wow which is really nice and it, uh, you can also use you know a uv sphere instead of a skybox and it will give you the same depth effect but the cloud density and all of this is like pretty close to reality and you can control it with animations in the world like you're doing here which is really really nice but yeah if you next time you're at a vcat look up because towel has done our oh, wow. yeah skybox for sure <laughs> what do you call a cloud density close to reality well it just i've it, seen it, everything it, from no clouds to so many clouds you can't it doesn't look like day anymore yeah <laughs> right but it does like essentially the lighting effects are going to be like volumetrically correct and then it does tend to fade off like it's not non-conspicular cloud, clouds i suppose like you know they're high you're high uh... actually, the, towel, the towel in his vault because the vault he kept was with that sky he actually on the his yeah vault with different configurations for sure mm -hmm. create a window with different configurations and it actually matched the sky on the wall yeah <laughs> it's really nice <laughs> it is gorgeous well let's keep going yeah so yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh whoa! Yeah. It, it, it will desync. Yeah. yeah, this one is neat. This is pretty because, because it's actually not that heavy either. So and oh can... yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> That's like GPU particles. It's not really GPU particles because normal GPU particles is actually a particle system that is powered by GPU calculations. Well, this is kind of a hack using geometry shader, uh, which uh, lets you, like, again, take a uh, different mesh and move the triangles on different shape. You, you can multiply it. And uh, with that, you can create a particles that are, have the same speed as actual GPU particles. They they not actually GPU particles. They kind of geometry shader hack, but yeah, they technically the same. That's cool. Like they're actually <laughs> three D shapes mm. now. That's cool. Yep. Oh, the same blue marshmallows. A little little dude that killed people in the previous one. The same <laughs> face. This one is great. Oh. We can actually walk up here. Can go through the clouds. To the clouds. That's so insane. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Oh, yep, too late. <laughs> Yeah. Really easy to fall off. Like, yeah, I should have looked when I was walking. This is impressive. Yep. Yeah, it is very impressive. Yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? 
this was made by the same person that made that fire shader. I actually met mm. him when we've been testing shader fest and yeah, we've been like at... This is when I met him, yeah. But this is snow. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yep. Uh, change the shader. Change the shader. Okay. Okay. He's lagging. Okay. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was another... Yeah, sure. I mean, once, yes. Okay. Good. I think I know what it is. We'll have to take a look at your PC because I think we can get it nice and fast. I love that we can see Demke's World Space Shader in here, too. Oh, yeah. It just shows up. <laughs> this one's fun. Oh. Uh, here, you can play with these settings. Where is this? Get some, get some crazy displacement going on here. Set it up. We have a ball to set it up. Wall, but this one will be oh, ooh. That's so good. Someone has to combine this with the. Yeah, it's not actually 3D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that looks pretty 3D to me. Oh, that, is that... <laughs> wow. I, I really want to see... I, I, I love this effect, and I, I think also, it would be really, really good in a, in a musical. Oh, yeah, for sure. Too, but, but this was what, a pinwheel? <laughs> More like oh. a... Um, Northern Lights. Lights. Yep. I like some the Northern Lights. The next one is the, the <laughs> most trippy uh, <laughs> thing um, out there. I know, it looked familiar, eh? We could, but I think we won't be having a little oh. better. <laughs> or will be. Okay. Oh. This one's this, this is a, This is an interesting traveling uh, thing. Like you go inside of it. What? Uh, and then. Like, uh, well, let me just. Uh, oh, oh. Zero. Okay, there we go. Oh. And make no, no, I'm asked. Don't worry, when you go inside, it doesn't animate. <laughs> So now you can basically travel in like. Uh, it shows you power of ray marching. Like literally, this is like it's like ray marching. You can create like infinite geometry. That's you can a walk through it. That is crazy. Hey, don't change, don't change because of inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'll I think I'll get lost yeah. in here forever. <laughs> if it does move it. Yeah, I'll find you. Oh, I'm free. <laughs> it is pretty amazing. It is. It's just amazing what you can do with shaders. This is actually what it's showing. Uh, what this is showing is actually hyperbolic space. So normally, like, space just goes straight in all directions. The hyperbolic space is uh, curved around, sort of like a lens, but it's like three-dimensional. And um, that normally in reality that's not able to exist, but in VR you can just calculate how it would look, and this is how it would look. Yeah, there's two fancy kinds of spaces. I forget which one's which, but there's one of them that, like, two points that Euclidean are a certain distance apart will always diverge. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. There's multiple kinds of non-euclidean though yeah, like there's two of them the big ones are the two points a certain distance apart will always converge yeah, 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 <laughs> and the other one is two points a certain distance apart will always diverge oh yeah, yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm preparing i am preparing myself for the next one okay <laughs> <laughs> oh a ball well this isn't that trippy i love silence shooter Indeed. <laughs> oh, silence? <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's a time. It's the time stop nice. shader, you know. Oh. The oh, oh yes. It's a wado. Well, you should have a Dio avatar, not uh, the. Fucking well, I mean, he eventually <laughs> uses it too. Yeah, it's true. But I didn't say well, the wado, though. What though? Like oh. the Dio, like this, this one using you know, a trick, it combines negative and positive layer to make things go 
Okay. Yeah. Nice. It's a great shader. If you need that, yeah, yeah, it's really nice for sure. By the way, silent. Even though it's off topic, you're made of his cute, by the way. Oh, no, it's fine. This is really cool. Yeah, just coming over here. Now look over here. Right? Now we are the stained glass. Yay, we're art. Oh. Do we have any setting on this? Uh, uh, because uh, uh, there's also one limitation with the shaders is that you can only access the uh, like pixel on the position, and uh, in order to get a uh, pixel surrounding, you need sample detection multiple times. So it's kind of yeah. Uh, this kind of shit is also difficult to do. Yeah, and it's using it just the, doesn't work good for is, tiny what, people. <laughs> yeah, well, what is called this pattern? Because this is like, yeah, it is, it's actually distance fields. Yeah, and it samples like the specific part of oh, the screen, perfect. the camera, or based on the distance. Nice. Yeah, on random, it, it samples on random points, and yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's me, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also creates the projection over here, right? The light. Yeah, it's, is yeah, it biometric light? It like? this direction. Yeah, it's like a fake volumetric. Ooh. It's nice. <laughs> An excellent um, uh, version of fake volumetrics is also done by Voxel K. If you've been to... They've got this volumetric projection world, which is absolutely gorgeous. But the cool part is, is it does go on your avatar, right? So if you've got the shaders that can handle it, it does it does the job, right? Which is extremely nice for interactive and worlds that need it. Like you could build an entire, you could use this shader, build an entire church scene out, or any other like nice. you know light casting through, and it is it's going to affect you know everyone in the world as well. So yeah. makes it uh, makes for some cheap lighting. You don't have to do it all that like you know natively, which is really, really nice. Yeah. Now fall. Yeah, let's fall. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> oh. We're falling. Oh. I love the little sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> it might be a portal. <laughs> oh. Just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we didn't unlock the the area yet because we haven't seen green yeah oh yeah to show to show people um you know as we end the stream this is a really good place to do it mm -hmm. uh if you I haven't this is good way here uh, yeah, if you look over here there's a secret look look, look under you oh. look under you yep oh right, right down here you. here's like a yeah. secret yeah. area and you can only get it when you see all the shaders yeah, oh, except MK. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost you guys for a bit, and I thought you were in green, so I went through green entirely. <laughs> oh, nice. So you Maybe, made it. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but... Uh, yep, it is definitely uh, worth it. Because uh, it's, not, it's like in Japanese, so it actually explains that you are going to pull something straight. It's everything is... Like, the uh, fact that you be, like see on your avatar is like shaded, so it's actually like... Saying that uh, you also are exhibition, kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you need to go there to understand what they go in the world, but this forces yeah. you to wait until the very end of the world for the narcissism. It's <laughs> definitely worth it, and you should you should get it all you should get all the way through for sure. Thank yeah. you so much, guys, for sticking around with oh, us. Oh yeah. Ever. Um. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I actually figured out this when I first came to this world. I um, I was kind of messing with this a lot. <laughs> with the giant eyeball. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. There's a lot of really, really cool things here. And again, like a lot of this, this is an example of a community that came together, you know, to build a way to showcase something that was sort of underserved in VRChat. And 
there's a lot of groups doing that um and it's starting we're starting to see more of it with vrcon and and vcat obviously but not only that shader fest and and yeah. um 100 yeah, yen this, fest yeah. and yeah, oh, man, japanese so have a, Japanese, yeah, japanese have a lot of smaller like exhibition oh yeah like, mm -hmm. and they usually yeah, they I not run like time. specific Sorry, days. They just like release the wall like, with the shader fest. Like they just, you know, they don't have an end date. Uh, they just release the wall and everybody can come and, on that. Uh, and can be like, whenever I, well, yep, I dropped exactly. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. But like, yeah, yeah, so so they, 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 they want to, they actually like friendly for this stuff. It's kind of friendly for English, but you need to catch when the submission period starts. They have a Twitter, when we search on Twitter, shader fest, there's a. Share like first. Totally uh, uh, well, uh, they usually do the stuff at uh, the end of the year, so his, uh, they probably, if, uh, if they're gonna make it this year, um, it's gonna be so like October. Hut, uh, if interested. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, if like, not, but, yeah. if not, they'll, it'll be another and another and one, like one year. You, like the, So far, they've had uh, two, but you know, if you want to see some of the work that these people are doing, obviously, you're gonna find a lot of their stuff on Booth. You're gonna find a lot of these creators in the catalog on there as well. And also at VCAT, most but, of most of but, them but, have but, been but I, exhibitors there as but well. But I'm mainly telling for for people who make shaders. If you're interested, yes, in that's true. Shaders, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. look on uh, around October, September. That's where usually they because they can uh, shader fest like those two events will like at, at the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to yeah, show a couple of portals that, too that before the end of the stream. Oh. I also want to show I also want to show a couple of worlds based on some of the people who are here. Um, Silent just made an excellent world, demonstrating some of the features of Filamented as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's one E N seven. My sixteen. By the way, I'm... by the way, oh. it's very easy to submit stuff into here. It's like very mm -hmm. easy. I, I submitted my stuff in two days, so it's yeah. not that hard. It's actually easier than to run it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, we, there's a lot of, um, there's definitely, it's definitely difficult to um, sometimes to submit these things if you don't know, kind of know what's going on. But this, this particular event is not complicated. And you can see by the number of Western exhibitors that are here now, it's not, not too bad at all. Um, who has a link to Ambient? I just want to drop the world so that people can Gotta see what, what it looks like. But when I do, okay. it's super fucking specific. <laughs> yeah, but, and it's yeah. got a lot to do with it too. That's Half the better. shaders that are made in VR chat are made for a specific purpose. Shadow River, for example, does a lot of purpose-built shaders for VCAT maps, especially uh, the well, things well. that GT does. Yeah. Like, the world I'm working on right now is going oh. to end up with two. You have a good night, Lily. One, Lily. one of them just renders the walls looking kind of portal-like at the top, and then uh, kind of like concrete at the bottom. Yeah. I see that. And then the other ones like Actually, pipes that are going in a similar for? direction. Go from I'm looking for nine. ambient. Actually, uh, actually, um, the, the, the world with like a, a game in it, uh, a puzzle yes. solving. Yes. Yeah, I just game. wanted to show the portal just so that other people, if mm -hmm. other people are going through, if they want to see another demonstration, I don't want to jump through it. Oh, I just yeah. want to suggest it. Yeah. yeah. As another world that makes um, really, it's, really good it's use. It's spelled of as. It. It. It's spelled as amibient. Oops. Amibient. Yeah. Uh, so is it yeah. AM? Also, also, AM also if you use amplify, you technically. Making such shader, <laughs> yeah. So if oh, you yeah, amplify with this, like more flow to create materials, to that's technically oh, a shader. And then uh, some are just like unreal. Oh, well. This is like the oh. full way to make uh, material. I'm gonna have to ask you yeah, to walk that back. Materials. It's not technically creating a shader; it is creating yeah. a shader. So this is the world yeah. so to this, this, this was again yeah. created by yeah, yeah, collaborative, collaborative world between the winner and If you want to drop down into plain HSLS or whatever it is. You, yeah, can. you can do that. Yeah. No, my favorite so, things I know, do that. I know. I've got a handful of custom but, modules. But people who use simplify mm. don't even know. Yeah, that let's um, wrap it up then. Um, yeah, let's Can, yeah, can yeah, everyone um, go on the stage? So, can I have a couple things? Let me put the camera. Yeah. There we go. Right, but yeah, this is um the Shader Fest. Sure. I definitely recommend checking out. Um, as you see, it's a, just filled with a bunch of amazing staff and a lot of creators who made their own shaders and made stuff that you probably wouldn't think it would be made in shaders. <laughs> I yeah, do recommend. A lot of things here that it, oh. people think are think are udon gimmicks and that sort of thing, but they definitely aren't. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, definitely check it out. It's um, called Shitterfest 2021. Um, you can check it out on VR Chat. Episode 2019. And 2019. <laughs> yeah. You can check it out on VR Chat. It can be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Um, pretty much you can play on VR Chat. You can do it with VR, desktop VR, um, desktop, mobile, and also on Quest as well. Definitely check out this world. Um, do you guys have any um, any announcements or anything you want to advertise before we go? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, music you get <laughs> June sixteenth. Uh, See some of these uh, guys. Uh, shows? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Too. <laughs> that's yeah. Oh. You can friend me. I'm sort of very You can friend me. So. You can also uh, follow me on Twitch. Uh, I mostly do DJing, uh, but on Twitter I post a lot uh, shader related stuff as well. Mm. Uh, I there may be there may be a collab soon between the two of us and some club things happening very very soon. So we'll see if you're still down for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. But yeah, definitely check out the people who you saw here. There's there's some wonderful things. Also, thanks to everybody who stuck around for like this is like our first little like peace light nice first little yeah silent yeah <laughs> 0264 please. Yeah. But yeah, also this is like our very first like one of our first community showcases that peace light and I have done together. So yeah. I'm really happy to you guys were here for the first one yeah so. it was a lot of fun lots um, more to come yeah just actually getting to talk to the actual creators not to show their stuff but they um mm -hmm. did it's just amazing and it's just a good oh just all good times <laughs> for sure yeah leave us some feedback if you like this kind of thing like hit us up on on uh you know on on twitch on twitter we're, mm -hmm. we're all over the place you can't miss us yeah and also this video will be archived on youtube uh once i um, do some editing on it, um, just to remove all the scuffness of the stream. <laughs> but, but can't give that computer a good look. Yeah. I'm gonna send it to to Momo Ma. <laughs> I think he'll enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. Momo Ma was on earlier today as well, and I'm sure they'll enjoy that too. Yeah. So. Okay. So, um, is there? Do you want to know where you can follow you guys, like on Twitter or Twitch or yeah, whatever I, you do? Um, yeah, Twitter. And you can find information about that meetup there. It's been. <laughs> so it's what it's uh, the Mercury project. Want to find out what it is. And happen we get a lot of information about They've it. They've got lots of cool worlds. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, just two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for sure. Well, actually, three. Uh, three three now. Well, three, yeah. three and four, I guess. Four now. Oh, yeah. Well, there's and... those two are the version of, two versions of the same map. <laughs> 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 so it's not like a lot of worlds. Mm. It's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um anyone else? I mean, Angry's Destiny has got a Twitter and a Gumroad. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. He's yeah. fine. I'm on the only one. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm actually oh, have God, a Gumroad as well. <laughs> but but mostly for 3D models. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, almost everybody here is making stuff in VR chat. Some some of it for free, uh, some of it open source. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and, and on Vicket store as well. Yeah. Yeah, three shit is that from mine um, because sort of, yeah, hmm. so, so um does anyone else want yeah. to um tell you where to find you and like on Twitter or Twitch? I think that I, th I think that's everybody. There we go. I just put something in the chat. Oh. There you go. Uh, yeah, and there's Miss Savvy's um on Twitch and Twitter. And what about you, Silent? Yeah. Do you have anything else? Like are, are you working on other projects or anything you want to announce? Mm -hmm. Soon, soon. Oh, let me zoom in the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Looking, looking forward to it, Silent. And um, Demki, since this is your first time checking out this world, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I'm always amazed by Shaderfest. Looking at all the stuff that Shader creators in VR chat make, it's just wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I like to work with Shaders quite a bit myself. Uh, so this is this is like it's a huge 
It's a huge interest of mine. So I'm always excited to check out Shader Fest. Mm. Uh, this is what I think second or third? I don't I don't remember. Yeah. This is second one. Second, time, yeah. second one. Yeah. yeah. And Miss Dobby, you said Maybe you guys are working on another one? No, no, uh, no. I assume what? there's gonna be a next one at one point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're not sure because there was uh, like a two years gap between those two. Uh, I see. don't know. Mm. It's not the best of mama. Yeah, um, we'll yeah similar to other conventions yeah. like like Game well, Vcat. Like um, you need permission it, to cause one of these to happen. <laughs> Well, it depends, but it does take it does take um, having uh, enough new stuff in the community to really like justify oops. it, right? And that's one reason why Game VCAT and Comic VCAT have a longer lead time than VCAT itself and Music VCAT. For oh example, yeah, for sure. There's just not enough stuff out there to make a full event, and so when they do come out, it's definitely worth it checking out as soon as they do. Yeah, yep. and when when and you guys are going to make these roles oh. takes a lot of uh, time and uh, effort. Uh, oh yeah. Well made. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, but if you guys are going to announce um, the next Shader Fest, where would you uh, find it uh, or hear about it? Uh, okay, we're not organizing it. It's Momoma. It's like practically Japanese run. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. As you see the credits. Yeah, uh, you, you they, they, have a tw tw yeah, they have a Twitter account, mm -hmm. uh, which is also, I think, Shader Fest. And there's uh, information. Like if you follow yep. it, if you want to like, make it. and again, if you want to exhibit, then it's probably going to be around September that you need to look at it to see if there's submission fees. It's not that hard. Like people like press, oh, the, the, those guy, like cool guys like me making this decision. Literally, it's very easy. If you make shaders, you just apply and submit and yeah. Yeah. Yep, Momoma <laughs> is Momoma underscore creative on Twitter, and you can also find them, you can also find um, some of the other organizers like um, uh, Kenamo, oh. which is um, Kenamo underscore vworker, and they'll they'll retweet the heck out of it, so if you follow them, you'll yeah, find they it. Have a Twitter account. Yeah, 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 and at Shaderfest so, so, yeah, as well. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yep, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, d thank for, definitely. Um, yeah, thank you for everyone for coming, and I'm um, hoping uh, supporting the stream. I really do appreciate it for yeah, uh, every, for every one of you coming of, coming to the thanks stream. Thanks for inviting us. <laughs> That's not a problem. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, but yeah, so I hope everyone has a good evening or a good afternoon, depending on your time zone. And next stream will be on Sunday, and it will be a drawing stream, a VR drawing stream. So and it will be like um, Easter theme, which I'm planning to do. It could be oh, either good. yeah. Yeah, it would definitely be either be scuff as usual, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. Hope you have a good. Oh. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so yeah, we're glad, glad, glad to do it with you. Yeah, likewise. Okay. Yeah, and there might be another um, community showcase um, in the future, but for now. Um, you have a good night. Good, yeah, let us know. Good... If you have a community you think needs showcasing, you know, let me and Peace Light know and we'll see what we can do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anyways, you guys oh, have a good evening. Good... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> see you, guys. you have a good evening. Good afternoon. Bye. Peace. <laughs>